morning, YouTubers. Um, you know, when you're out in the woods, uh, you're camping, you're bushcrafting, you're doing various things, knots, tying knots is going to be an absolute necessity. Um, you know, there's just three or four things that you need to know out there. Um, some very basic knots will do probably 99% of what you want them to do. In this particular case, we're going to hang ridge lines. Uh, we're going to do a lark's head knot so that you can set up like a trout line, uh, possibly hang a pot from a, a ridge line and put it over or, or over a tripod and put it over, you know, a fire and hang your pot. Um, use a little toggle so that you can put it through the handle and won't fall into the fire. Um, but there's a lot of different things. So today we're going to look at a quasi or semi trucker's hitch. We're going to look at a pressic knot. Um, we're going to look at uh, the lark's head knot that's on there. And then we're going to do one that I picked up off the Dave Canterbury's website, Wilderness Outfitters. Um, and that's called a uh, Canadian jam knot. So we're going to go over those four knots here right quick. And we'll see if uh, you can use them in, in your everyday outdoor activities. And hopefully they'll be um, you know, very useful for you. And cover, like I said, about 99% of everything you need to do in a campsite slash bushcraft scenario. So stay with me, guys. All right, guys, I carry four 20 to 25 foot pieces of paracord and I have put and these are in my backpack and I've put some big metal rings that I got at the hardware store on them. This is great for lashing around a tree, drawing it up tight, and then you can put tension on this line and it's not going to go anywhere so long as it's got tension. The other thing about this fairly heavy metal ring is that if you had a big tree or something and you couldn't reach around it, it's got enough weight and heft to it that you could throw it around the tree, catch it, string your line through it. Another thing, if you were going to lift up the backside of your tarp, which you'll see in a, in a video that's coming up, if you were going to use that option to put it over a tree branch and lift the back of that tarp up, uh, then you would have, you know, you would have the, the ability to throw that up through the tree and hopefully not get it caught on anything and then drop it back down the other side so that you'd be able to fetch the other end of the line. What we've done here is I've got two trees. There's my other one. And, oops, sorry about that, guys. And as you can see, I've got another 25-footer attached to this side. These trees are just not quite long enough to do a wrap of the line all the way around. So what I've done then is I've put this other one here and what we're going to do is we're going to tie these two center lines together. So stay with me and uh, I'll get the camera set up and I'll show you what I've got in mind for that. All right, guys. Now I've got two lines. Each one, one goes to the tree that way. One goes to the tree going the other direction. Now, how am I going to tie these, these two lines together? Yeah, I probably could do a, a granny knot of sorts, you know, and tie it off like this right in the center of the rope. But the problem I'm going to have is that I won't be able to adjust the tension or do anything neat and spectacular that way. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to hold one end of the line off. The other line, I'm just going to throw that excess in my pocket so I don't have to pick it up later. What I need to do here is tie a loop in this line. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to loop it right up over itself. Okay? Then, I'm going to reach back through, putting a little slack in here, and I should be able to, again, loop that around. I can come up. This is the working end. This is the loose end. And I come back through that knot, and as you can see, now I've got a, I've got a basically a slip knot in here. The neat thing is, is in this particular case, where it's slipping, it's like this is my quasi trucker hitch, but where this line is slipping is off of the working end, which is very good because now that's going to allow me to do a couple of different things here. One, I can adjust the length of the loop pretty simply by feeding line out, or I can take it back in, just depends on how big I want this loop to be. Now, in order to keep the slip knot from sliding through like this back and forth, what I'll do is I'll just take a simple loop of this line, run it right over. You can come over the top towards you. Hopefully you guys will be able to see this. And then just pull it tight. 
okay now that won't stop it entirely you can clean your lineup get this one out of the way but I'm just gonna wrap back around I'm gonna come back up through this loop and basically what I've got is a couple of half hitches or bow not a bow line but a couple of half inch half inch half hitch type line uh, knots in here now that knot won't go anywhere at all it's secured where it is I've got another loop I can dangle stuff from but now I've got a working end on this line so what we're gonna do now if you can still see that that's our working end now all I've got to do is bring that other line coming from that other tree feed it through and now I can do this which is great because now I can keep tension on that line hang on guys I'll move it where you can see that now I can bear down on this I'll turn it sideways so you can see it and I just have that this other line going through that loop now in order to tie that off all I really have to do is pinch this line together now I can release because my fingers are holding the tension and I'm just going to tie the same thing I did on the other side. I'm just going to loop this over. <clears throat> Maybe. <laughs> we'll hold that there. And all I'm going to do is pull this loop up, make a big loop, and I'm going to pull it through, pull it down tight. Now that one knot is not going to hold it. So again, what I'm going to do is just loop it back around and through itself. Now I've got a nice taut ridge line. And if I need to, simply put, I can untie this particular knot. I can bear down on that line. I can make it even tighter than this. Not the best thing. It's not the cleanest thing. But I tell you what, it's super simple. And here's the other aspect of the knot on this side that I find to be great. And the way that we've tied that, instead of doing like a figure eight or something like that, I pull that out, release my line. Got a little stopper knot there. Now I can come back over here. Let me reposition that so you can see this, guys. Well, like I said, I just have those double loops in here. Super simple. No matter how much tension you put on the line running across, this secondary knot is never going to be so tight that you can't break it. Plus, all I've got to do is pull this line. It snaps loose. And because this is a wrap, now all of those lines are free don't have to worry about untying a knot cutting a line because it got too tight you know whatever the case may be on that so it's just an all-around very very good knot and again you just pull it so that the working end okay and that's the end that's free that hasn't been tied off to the tree or anything so and I've got that end right here now I can adjust the size of that knot so simply or not the knot rather but the loop so I want a halfway decent loop in there get it where I want it to be I just come up double itself back through tie it off tight run a secondary loop just threading it back through itself boom now this knot will not extend it will not contract because we've got just enough tension here to hold it all right so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna re-rig this this line here and then I'll show you guys the pressic knot so stay with me Okay, YouTubers, I've got my ridge line set back up. You can see it right here. Hopefully the camera will focus on that. Now what I'm going to show you is the pressic knot. And what I've done is I've just taken, I don't know, 16 inches, foot and a half worth. I've tied just your basic, you know, stopper knot on the end. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, to loop this line over the line, and I'm going to pull that knot through. I'm gonna flip it over, I'm gonna pull it through, and I'm gonna flip it over one more time. I'm gonna kinda of dress the lines a little bit, try and keep them neat and even. You can kinda of see how that's coming together there. Get my fingers out of the way. And then as I work it down, I'm just gonna be nice and neat. And basically, what you've got is a three wrap knot here on this particular line, okay? The neat thing about the pressic knot is that if I grab this and put tension on it, it self tightens, okay? And I'm holding onto this line. It self tightens so it won't slide. 
But all you've got to do is bunch that knot back up and that knot will slide anywhere you need it to go. This comes in real handy if you're putting up, oh, I don't know, a tarp or something like that and it's not quite as wide as the trees are um, or you've got it on a ridge line and you don't want to waste two or three pieces of paracord to tie it off to a tree. You can use a couple of scraps like this and attach it to the, to the tent or your tarp rather and, and make that an easy way to stretch that out and keep the tension on whatever it is that you're trying to keep taut, if that would make sense. So, for example, and you'll see this in, a, in another video where I do actually put my DD Hammocks 3x3 tarp up. And again, I had strung the same line up and, you know, the tarp wouldn't reach to the trees. And I didn't want to waste two more, you know, 25 foot pieces of, of cord um, to tie it off. So I wanted, what I wanted to do was to basically take, a, take and put a toggle through this. Um, I've got another piece of paracord here, if I can find it right quick. All right, so let's just say that this looped end here is the part that's sewn onto the end of my tent. If I want to attach that, and I'm just going to move this over, what I would do is just put this line up through that loop on my tarp. I would put a toggle in it, just a tree stick, branch, or anything. And now, I've got a way to secure those two together. Okay? I'm going to back the camera up just a little bit here. Maybe we can get all of this in. So, then... I bunch the knot, it'll slide down the line. But as soon as that knot gets taut, it's not gonna go anywhere. And I'm tugging on that pretty hard. And then this toggle just holds that. If it slacks up, I can just release the knot, put it down, but the harder I pull, the tighter this knot's gonna get. And that allows me to do a lot of things that just for tensions, you know, whatever the case may be, using a strand. When I set up my DD3 tarp, uh, you should see that in the next video. I'll put one of these on either side. Oops. Loosened it up. Push it back where I want it to be. And man, I tell you what, that's tight. Can't get rid of it. You want to use a halfway decent toggle, but anything will work because you're not putting thousands of pounds of pressure. Um, I have no idea what the pressure rating would be, but that's quite a bit. And you're not going to break this particular stick here. But that is one of my favorite overall knots is this Pressic knot. You can release your toggle, get rid of that. Now that line just hangs free. Even under tension like that, it is so simple. You just come up, grab this looped part, and pull your line back out. You know, basically just unwrap it like that and it'll come free. I always keep a dozen or, well, not a dozen, maybe half a dozen of these pre tied and in my pack at all times. Anyway, guys, that's the Pressic knot. You've seen my quasi truckers hitch. So now I'm gonna show you a couple other ones, so stay with me. Okay guys, now let's say I wanna make a trout line or something. And I wanna dangle another line off of this ridge line here, but I want it to drop down further. Maybe I'm making a trout line and doing some fishing overnight or something like that. Now what I've got is just another scrap piece of paracord that I keep. Um, I've got stopper knots in both ends just because. But in this case, what we're gonna do is we're going to loop this over. We're gonna bring that loop down and we're gonna grab both pieces, the short working end and the long end, and we're gonna pull it back through that knot. We're gonna pull everything through. Then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna work this knot, work this knot, all the way up to the stopper knot. We'll just accelerate that process a little bit. I'm gonna pull her down, pull it down. And as long as this stopper knot here, right here, is underneath of this loop, this will never give way because it just can't fit through there when it's under tension. This is another excellent knot, just all around general purpose, good knot to know, okay? You can tighten it up. In fact, for the sake of everyone else that'll complain about it, now we've got that tightened up. That knot sits in there, it's pretty. You can see how it looks on both sides there. And again, as long as you've got this stopper knot right here, it's not gonna pull back through this loop. Even if you got a 40 pound cat out there, you're never gonna see that come loose. So that's called a lark's head knot. 
The other end of that knot is a very good way to put a toggle again. And then with that one, you can hang like a billy pot over a tripod or something. And here, let me show you how that works. All right, YouTube, for simplicity's sake, same application as we did before. I'm just going to loop this over. I'm going to loop it up. In this case, I can flip this over and work with it. It's pretty simple. Now I'm going to pull both sides of that line up through that loop. Try and make that neat. Okay? Again, I'm just going to work this down and twist it until that knot catches right behind that loop. Oops. Use a good green stick, by the way. So you see it from the front. Again, that knot's under the loop. It's not going to come free. And that thing is just going to sit in there super tight. Now I'll show you how that works with the billy can. In this case, I'm gonna, I am going to say this. In this case, I'm going to put a little slip knot. Just a super simple roll hitch in here. And I will show you why I put that particular knot in the billy pot one as soon as we come back. Stay with me. All right. Now I've got a zebra can here, zebra pilly pot. I'll just take some of this extra weight out of it here for simplicity's sake. Uh, pick that up online as well. Now let's say that this is hanging over the fire, okay, and I want to heat this thing up. It's going to be interesting because there might be different heights and weights that I want to adjust it from the fire with. Okay. Sorry for messing with the camera here, guys, but need to get it into the shot, so to speak. So anyway, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the working end, this opposite end of this line, I'm going to throw it up over my ridge line, and I'm going to put it through this loop. Maybe. Now all I'm going to do, just a simple overhand knot with a, with a little tag on it here just to hold this into place, okay? So that should do. Now I've got my toggle. When I bought the Zebra Billy Can, it had a hard metal squared handle on it. I took that off. This is 40 pound stainless steel mirror hanging wire. Put a couple of swags on it here, just so it'd be loose, easy. Fits down, wraps around, it's easier to pack than that square handle was in there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this and put it right over the bale, okay? And now I'll just center it so that it looks halfway decent. And there it's going to sit right over top of my fire. I've got this line up here with the loop knot loop in it so that I can adjust the height. If I want it to be a little closer to the coals, I just release some of the tension on this. If I want it to be higher up and slow it down a little bit, I can just tie it up over the top. Any knot will do here, just wrap it through, hold it into place. Anything that does not require being untied in the long run. So that is your combination lark's head with an inline hitch, if you will, and an adjustment one so that you can hang your pot at any height over the fire. Again, that lark's head's on the um, toggle. And over the top, just a simple, you know, slip knot or just I laid the line right over the ridge line, tied that loop in it, and now I'm able to adjust the height. Stay with me and I'll show you the Canadian jam knot next. All right, guys. Now, the next thing you might want to do is you might want to take a bedroll, a wool blanket, small sleeping bag, whatever, and you need a way to secure it to, the, to your pack. This is called the Canadian jam knot. Got this from Dave Canterbury on his Wilderness Outfitters website or correction youtube channel what i've done is i've just got a length of paracord again and i have the stopper knots in them in this case what we're going to do is we're going to just tie an overhand knot all i'm going to do is take the working end always leave a tag that's going to be critical in in the final portion of this and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to loop that up through and i'm going to pull her down a little bit okay it's, it's critical that when you make this knot, okay, that your stopper knot sits right up here on top. I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but it's got to be right up here on top, and I'll show you why. 
you take the other working end, okay, and you bring it up through the bottom of this knot, all right? Pull it through, and once you've got it tightened down, and you've worked down this knot here, what happens is, is your stopper knot right here also acts as a sled for this knot, right? This line coming through, the more tension you put on it and close this knot here, the more tension this puts on this working line here, and it won't come loose until you grab the tail and release it. So I'll tie that again because it's just so simple. It's got to be one of the greatest knots ever. So again, you're just going to take your working end and you're just going to tie a little loop and make sure you come from the bottom side up, okay? And then you're just going to work that down. Now you'll take your working end, the other end of your line, come up through the bottom and wrap that around whatever it is that you're going to wrap it around until it gets tight. I'll show you that when we get it here. I work down the knots, make sure everything's right where it needs to be. Get this knot here right to sit right on this loop. Then you just pull tension on it like that and it won't release until you pull this tag and simple enough it pulls apart. Now I'll show you what that looks like around this old towel here that we carry when we're out camping for a variety of reasons. So now I've got this rolled up nice and neat. That's going to be my bottom side. So coming over the top then, again, simple loop. I'm coming right back over, over the top, down underneath. Got my tag on it so I can release it later. I'm going to work it down a little bit. This is the other line. I've now run it through the pack, the straps on the bottom of my pack, on the outside, whatever the case may be. And now I'm just pulling it through, making, putting tension on my towel here, okay? Now again, I've got to work this down so that that knot sits right here on this loop. So I'm just going to work it down, work it down a little bit. Now, all I'm going to do is pull tension. I pull tension, I pull tension. Now notice, man, you can't even get your finger in there and it's not working itself loose, okay? The other thing all I want to do to release it, I just grab the tag, pull it. Again, I can work this thing down, I can make it as tight as I want, and that then will not come unloose until you want it to. This knot at the top is jamming against this free line or the working end down here, and that's why they call that the jam knot. Just release it, pull. God, it is so simple. Um, you know, got a big, big shout out for Dave Canterbury and his website and all the fine, fine work he's done out there. It, uh, you know, it's reminded me a lot of things that I had forgotten over the years. I'm a 53-year-old guy, and I knew a lot of stuff, forgot a lot about it. And Dave um, has reminded me of a lot of that information. He's also taught this old dog a bunch of new tricks. This happens to be one of them. Again, we're going to loop. We're going to come up through from the bottom side. Make sure that knot sits up on the top. You can leave a little bit more room in that. Bring your other line right through the bottom, okay? Again, now I'm gonna start working this top knot so that this line coming out and that knot are on the same side, nice and even, okay? Sometimes it takes a minute to work it down there, that's okay. Now I've got that pretty tight. It's basically a slip knot. Now I just pull that dude tight and it will not release. I love this knot. What a great knot. And then to release it, you just grab your tagline and pull it free. Now your bedroll, your sleeping bag, whatever it is that you had secured, even just keeping a towel wrapped up and under control. This is a super simple knot absolutely wonderful simple to break down the loop that goes over the top all you got to do is peel it back you break the back of the knot it comes right apart and voila another scrap piece of paracord has found a usefulness in my backpack well guys those are the knots i wanted to show you today the quasi trucker the turk's head the Presic, and the canadian jam knot 
Um, if you like the videos, like them, subscribe to the channel. I do appreciate any and all comments. Um, you know, commenting with one another is, is what makes us all learn and grow as bushcrafters out there. Anyway, you guys have a great day and we'll see you out in the woods.